September afternoon in Sinks Canyon of the Poposia River in northwestern Wyoming. This is a big glacial canyon that was scoured out during the Pleistocene when big glaciers were coming down from the Wind Rivers and gouging out huge canyons as they prograded out into the eastern part of the state. The canyon behind me is chock full of Precambrian through Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, and so on, carbonates, sandstones, and uh, conglomerates. But the most interesting part here is what's right behind me, and you probably hear it roaring in the background. And it's what gives this canyon the name, the Sinks, because the Poposia River, which is apparently crow for gurgling water, comes down the mountain here as a big boulder-strewn mountain river, and it enters a cave a cave in the Madison limestone, which is a big Paleozoic limestone that's easily eroded by slightly naturally acidic groundwater, rainwater, and so forth. So glacial meltwater that started coming out when the glaciers were receding 10,000 years and until today has eroded big cracks and fissures and canyons in the Madison limestone. The river actually disappears into the mountain here. A quarter mile downstream, it comes back out. That's what's called the rise of the Poposia. So we have the sinks of the Poposia and the rise. This is always a popular stop with geological field tours because we get to talk a little bit about karstic topography, fractures, fluid flow. But there's an interesting thing going on here. There's been a big mystery about what happens to this water and why it comes out at a greater volume downstream than going in. Let's go down to the rise. We'll take a look at it down there and see if we can get to the bottom of this. I figured before we go down to the rise, let's take a look, a little bit closer look on this path that goes down to the sinks and see what we see down here. Could be pretty interesting. Let's see if we can get a little bit further out here. Man alive. Can't help but do some geology. Look at these boulders. It looks like a lot of them are granite. Um, you can see the crystals in the granite. The granite is strong enough to stand up to this just punishing, punishing water. And that's why you're seeing all these nice big um, Quartz and feldspars, orthoclase, plagioclase, the usual granite suspects in here. Not much in the way of sedimentary rocks. Looks like all granitic boulders. So they have a nice visitor center here. I'm here after Labor Day, so it's closed. But they've got a great little display of the different rock types that you see in the canyon. So we can take a look at that, see what it's we've really got. really nice they've arranged it stratigraphically. So starting off with the Precambrian granite, that's the bulk of those boulders we saw down there. There's also some banded iron formation, which is a Precambrian metasediment. It's basically metamorphosed shale, marine mudstone. Here's the Cambrian flathead sandstone. We saw that in a different video when I was talking about Rollins, Wyoming, and the Brooklyn Bridge, all kinds of other great stuff. So you can watch that and learn about the flathead. There's still the Cambrian. It's the Grovant shale. It looks like Grosventer, but it's pronounced Grovant. And it looks like there's all kinds of little burrows and trace fossils on this. They say it's trilobite tracks. That would be Cruziana and Russophycus, and that's not these. Um, you know, that might be one. A lot of these look just like little planolites type things. Um, whatever. Gallatin limestone. It's a pebbly limestone. It's Cambrian as well. So the Cambrian, you know, it spanned a long time. Um, looks like a pebble class of a limestone. Bighorn Dolomite, this is an interesting one. We're gonna look at this in the Wind River Canyon along with some other of these formations, the Cambrian through um, the Pennsylvania formations all the way up into the Permian maybe. Madison Limestone, speaking of which, this is the material that's being all eroded into the caves back here that we just saw. You can see it's all kind of easily weatherable, very dissolvable, 
in acidic waters. So this is the one that's really prone to getting eroded into the sinks. Here's more of the Madison limestone. Um, it's less dissolved. This one is a dolomite. This one's the limestone itself. Lo and behold, the Amsden formation, which is Mississippian to Pennsylvanian. It's a sandstone, kind of a reddish oxidized sandstone, much like the Ten Sleep sandstone. Ten Sleep is Pennsylvanian. Um, there's the Phosphoria, which is also a marine um, carbonate slash, um, you know, potentially it's got a marine shale that's a good source rock in it for petroleum. So a lot of people are chasing after this. The Chugwater Formation, Triassic. It's got a little bit of ripple mark on this. There's also a variety of different facies. They've chosen a nice ripple marked one. Hey, that's cool. Looks good. The Nugget Sandstone, Big Aeolian Jurassic. Gypsum Spring is a called that because there's gypsum crystals in it. It's early Jurassic as well. Evaporite. Here's the Sundance. I've got this facies in a video that I made down there, uh, not too far from here, in a place called Johnny Behind the Rocks. This is a big um, part of a compound tidal dune complex that existed in this region in the Jurassic. Morrison and Cloverly, here's a sandstone. And finally, a granitic boulder, which is the granite from back there that's gotten reworked by Pleistocene ice sheets. So this has been really a nice little display. Thank you very much for Hope Mullally, Donald Zenger, and the University of Missouri Geology Camp. You guys are all awesome. We appreciate this display. We all know what goes up must come down in many ways, but in the case of the Poposia River, what goes down must come up. And we're here at the rise. We just visited where it sank down into the Madison Limestone Caves. We're gonna see where it rises back up out. I've heard about this. It was a fish food dispensary because there's a whole bunch of apparently monstrous trout that hang out right where the water comes out and just sit there and gorge. You're not allowed to fish there, so they just get fatter and bigger and more awesome it's sort of like couch potato trout let's take a look at these these i gotta see hi are you begging for food or are you just coming to visit holy cow oh my god oh my god look at that there's i don't know dozens of fish some of those things look like they're about 30 inches long that's insane it looks like a bunch of cutthroat and rainbow trout oh my dear lord no wonder you're not allowed to fish in there holy cow just lined up here that's where the water's coming out it looks like that's the rise right there that little innocuous crevice and you can see it's bringing with it a lot of debris that's that sandbar that's piled up so there's debris coming out along with the water and these fish are just piled in here because Water gurgling like that is, of course, oxygenated, so there's a whole lot of oxygen in here. So they're breathing easy. There's a lot of nutrients in that because it's dissolving limestone. It's got all this nice calcium carbonate and various other minerals that promotes algal growth. That's why the water's so green. Algae, of course, means lots of little insects. Oh, <laughs> that the trout like to eat. This is aquatic insects, probably aquatic um, amphipods and scuds and crest bugs and things like that. Everything a trout would need to just sit there and get fatter and bigger. Oh man. And you can fish down that way, but something tells me these fish all pretty much know that, you know, if you hang out in this big giant pool, you're okay. If you get past the giant pool, life gets tougher. Oh my God, this is killing me. This is awesome. The rise of the Poposia. Man, maybe I should get some pellets to feed these things. So the geology of the canyon here is Really stunning, but a little bit frustrating because there's a lot of um, talus cover, a lot of vegetation cover. What stands out a lot is that Pennsylvanian 10 sleep sandstone. And it's a big Aeolian unit that forms the cap of this entire canyon here. Really stunning, really clean sand. It's Aeolian. So again, windblown sand 
with very little in the way of silt or mud or carbonate, just sand on sand on sand. So it's an excellent, excellent reservoir for water, for oil, for gas, whatever you're trying to drill subsurface. If the 10 sleep has it, unless there's a fault or something going through it, it pretty much acts like a giant container. It's about as good of a reservoir as you can ask. And you can see the stratigraphy here is all dipping to the east into the basin. So that 10 sleep starts off really high up in the canyon. And by the time we get to the mouth of the canyon, we can actually drive right through it and take a look at it if we were so inclined. The rest of that um, Paleozoic through Cambrian, through Precambrian is just covered here. You'll see little peaks of it here and there uh, sticking out, but not anywhere near like the 10 sleep. You know, I got so carried away with all those monster trout down there and the beautiful 10 sleep sandstone on the cliff above, I almost forgot to talk about the mystery of the rise. I alluded to it at the last stop, but what's really interesting here is, you know, scientists being scientists, we're a really curious, nerdly group of people. And please to explain it. So everybody saw the Poposia River going down into the sink, and everybody sees the Poposia River coming up out of the rise here. All right, no question about that, but scientists aren't content just to look at stuff and go, mm-hmm. We always have to measure and, and analyze and poke and probe. So when some geologists and hydrologists started measuring volumes of water coming out of the sinks, they noticed it's greater than the volume of water going into the sinks. So the water coming out of the rise here is more than what's going in. So there's additional water coming from somewhere. Where is it coming from? We don't really know. The other mystery, there's two for one here, one rise, two mysteries, they put dye in the sink just to prove that this is the same water because you know, if there's more coming out than going in, something's weird. Do we even know this is actually the same water? So they put some dye in the water up there, quarter mile upstream in the sinks. And somebody down here was on a radio and said, okay, stick the dye in. And they waited and they waited. Like, are you sure you put the dye in? Yeah, man, we put it in. Waited, waited two hours it took two hours to go one quarter mile and it finally came out but with more water so it's diluted so there is a serious mystery here of where is this additional water coming from now it's really hard to get into that karstic system you can't send people in because it narrows down to little cracks and crevices not far from the sink so there's this network of little cracks and crevices presumably it's plumbed in somewhere else in the hillside and presumably it's getting water from somewhere up in the wind rivers maybe but nobody knows exactly where so this is something yet to be solved. How do you get more water out and why does it take two hours to go a quarter mile when it's moving at a pretty good clip, it looks like. Things that make you go, hmm. So apparently in 1919, a power plant and a dam were built upstream of the sinks and they diverted water around and then back into the sink and down and it operated until 1955, providing power for the town of Lander. The dam is now in a state of disrepair, it sounds like. Um, Serve an interesting little um, side note on this river here that the Poposia was actually a source of power for the town of Lander. Um, not anymore. I don't know what the exact story is, but it's kind of interesting regardless. I'm going to continue on my adventure of looking at various rocks and especially trace fossils here in Wyoming. That's really what I'm here to do after all. This is just a pleasant diversion. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get a kick out of the sinks and the rise. Interesting to look at. Fascinating to see giant trout. If you're a fisherman like me, it really hurts to see them right here and you can't do anything about it. But you know, more power to you guys. You deserve to live an unmolested life. There's enough stress in the world as it is. Am I right? Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you again on the outcrop next time. Take it easy.